me. Five seconds in, we still have no telemetry. Ten minutes. We should have had uh, Atlas Agena primary propulsion system burnout at this point. This could indicate, of course, that something uh, went wrong in the Agena propulsion system. This is Houston. Let's go back to the Cape now and find out what's been going on here. As soon as we get some additional information on the Agena, we'll come back to you. Attempting Check to ignite the Agena engines uh, may this have caused a difficulty aboard there. At the Cape. We're now at uh, resuming our count, continuing with our master count. We're now at 84 minutes and 29 seconds and counting. Some three minutes after the hour, about three minutes after the Atlas Agena liftoff, the hatches were closed on the Gemini 6 spacecraft. And we're now gearing up at the 100-foot level in the White Room to prepare to evacuate it and uh, be ready to continue down with the rest of the count. Following the Atlas Agena liftoff, we got a pretty good little fire going in the umbilical section out at Launch Complex 14. This is not considered to be any problem. We have, are playing water on it at the present time, and it appears to be under control. Very often on a launch, we will get fires around the base of the uh, umbilical and at the, on the pad itself. Uh, this is a natural phenomenon, for sometimes from fuel spillage, and it will be cleaned out, and it is not expected to be a problem. In the meantime, our countdown is continuing. And uh, back with the Gemini launch vehicle, and Wally Shira and Tom Stafford in the spacecraft, things still appear to be going well there. They are going through a series of communications checks with the blockhouse at the present time. Uh, we're looking good as our count continues for the second phase of the Gemini 6 mission, and that is, the, of course, the Gemini 6 liftoff. Uh, once we do get some good orbital parameters on the Agena, MCC, the Mission Control Center in Houston, will be advising us here at the Cape of what our proper time will be to launch in order to make the Gemini 6 rendezvous. This information will come perhaps with some early data at about 40 minutes before liftoff. Then at about the 18 mark in the countdown, uh, Chris Kraft, the flight director, will advise the launch vehicle test conductor at pad 19 of the time he wants to launch. Our hold time, our planned hold time at T minus three minutes will be coordinated with the time of liftoff requested by the flight director. We're now at T minus 82 minutes and 20 seconds. This is Gemini 6 launch control. And the situation is now that it's been 13 minutes since the launch of the Agena, and uh, for the last uh, five minutes there have been no here. reports. Here's Paul Haney. Our situation is this. We, uh, both the Cape Station and its nearby downrange range stations, along with the Bermuda Station, saw an abrupt telemetry loss on the Agena vehicle at 6 minutes and 20 seconds after liftoff. That is just about the time when the uh, Agena should have started its burn to place it in the desired orbit. However, the uh, Bermuda station is reading and has been reading right along the S-band signal from the Agena. That's one of the beacons. Another station downrange, we don't have any identification on the station, has consistently followed a C-band signal. So uh, I say again, our situation is we do not have the precise telemetry which gives us uh, the kinds of immediate orbital values we'd like to have and we should have had at Bermuda. We do have two beacons uh, very definitely operating in the Agena, and they are being followed right now by the Bermuda station. This is Gemini Control Houston. Well, obviously the Agena is aloft, but they're not getting the information back from the Agena necessary to uh, track it precisely and to get all of the uh, information they would need for a rendezvous mission. There has to be a rather massive exchange of information between the Agena and the manned spacecraft, the Gemini, to make the rendezvous mission successful. If the telemetry is not working aboard the Agena, it would certainly mean that the Gemini would not go up in an hour and 20 minutes from now as is, is scheduled to to do. In that case, uh, the Gemini 6 mission would be postponed until sometime after the first of the year. Mike Wallace is here with uh, Herb Ballard of the Lockheed Company, the builders of the Gemini, of the, uh, excuse me, the Agena. <laughs> Perhaps uh, you can tell us something about what might be going on up there, Mike. Walter, Herb tells me, first of all, as you know, the Agena takes over at about 120 miles up. 
and its 16,000 pound thrust engine then is supposed to take it up to a 185 miles circular orbit. However, Herb is not absolutely sure that even if they do not have the telemetry data from the Agena, that the launch of the Gemini could not go off on schedule. Isn't that the way you feel, Herb? Well, I guess that would be my opinion. Of course, this will be a decision that the uh, mission director will have to make. I guess the significant point is uh, the fact that you don't have telemetry does not mean that you cannot operate the vehicle uh, in any manner in which you would care to. You have power, obviously, aboard. We obviously have power because the beacons are working. Well, then how could you uh, affect rendezvous, let's say, if the telemetry data from the Agena is not working? Well, you're tracking the vehicle, so you know its uh, position at all times. Of course, without the telemetry, it would be a difficult decision to say that uh, you would want to complete the mission uh, without all the information. And again, I'd say the mission director will uh, have to make this decision. Right, Herb. Walter? Herb, I think that this is one of the uh, key points about this mission that we might get across right now. We have not yet in the space program up to this day, uh, but this day we are. For the first time, uh, on a real-time basis, that is, there isn't any book as to how this operation is going to go. The, when we got away from the Mercury program, we lost the whole business of a ballistic track where you knew exactly what time that, with, with, from the time the missile took off to the time it was going to land, even if it went around three orbits or six orbits, or uh, as Cooper did. Uh, I think that this is one of the uh, key points about this mission that we might get across right now. We have not yet in the space program up to this day, uh, but this day we are. For the first time, uh, on a real-time basis. That is, there isn't any book as to how this operation is going to go. The, when we got away from the Mercury program, we lost the whole business of a ballistic track where you knew exactly what time that, with, with, from the time the missile took off to the time it was going to land, even if it went around three orbits or six orbits, or uh, as Cooper did, a uh, whole day in space. Uh, but uh, now, the Gemini can be controlled, the Agena can be controlled, the men on the ground, the men in the spacecraft can make their decisions as they go through this operation, and there really isn't any book as to exactly what's going to happen today. I wonder, Herb, if you could tell us more specifically what it means when they lose telemetry data from the Agena. What are they losing specifically? Well, they're losing basically all of the information on the exact status of the subsystems that they will be using in, in performing any maneuver. So it is a significant loss to lose telemetry. Is it conceivable then that on that docking collar, all of that information could be out? That collar which the astronauts are going to have to see in making their approach for rendezvous? That's correct. Walter? Well, it's uh, something, of course, as Herb says, that Houston is going to have to decide. These are the men who sit down there with these uh, ponderous decisions that they must make. Uh, on uh, the operation of every phase and every second of our space program, and they're having to make that decision right now because the count is T-77 at the Cape for the uh, preferred launch of Gemini. Now, this window that is frequently talked about, the time uh, at which they can launch the Gemini, uh, is not uh, uh, limited to that uh, precise second uh, at T minus 76. As a matter of fact, they can wait almost two and a quarter hours and still launch uh, the Gemini today. But then a lot of things are going to be required that would not be required with the uh, normal launch at uh, uh, 12.41 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, with every uh, few uh, seconds that goes by, of course, the, uh, the uh, uh, Agena is getting further ahead, and the catch-up rate is going to have to be a little bit greater for the Gemini. This is really a hare and hounds chase through space. So over, if things go well, 103,000 miles, they'll be uh, chasing that uh, Agena in their Gemini capsule before they catch up. And during this uh, period of time, uh, they will have made uh, four orbits of the Earth, if all goes well. But now, if they have to wait to see if that telemetry comes back, or for any other reason, uh, at uh, Houston for the launch at Cape Kennedy, uh, 100 seconds of that delay, just one minute and 40 seconds delay, would mean that they could not catch the Agena until the fifth orbit. In the next 100 seconds after that, from 100 to 200 seconds, it would mean they couldn't catch Somebody it until six. Here's Paul Haney and Houston. Now, Houston. Minutes into the flight of the Agena, and the Canary Islands 
for the last two minutes has been trying to work the Agena bird without success. The uh, situation is not a very happy one here. We have not given up on it, but uh, the Agena does not seem to be responsive to any of a varied number of commands and schemes that have been used to try to acquire. The Bermuda station, as I reported, had a sporadic track, a very brief track, it now appears on the S-band signal. One other station downrange, still not very, I believe, Antigua, although that's not absolutely clear. Thought uh, they had some C-band. But uh, one thing is clear, at six minutes and roughly 20 seconds into the Agena flight, we had a very dramatic loss of telemetry from the Agena at precisely the point we should have gotten the Agena burn to place us in orbit. So to recap, the uh, situation does not look good. We've not counted it out yet, but uh, with the spacecraft now on the low edge of the Canary, Canary uh, acquisition area, uh, the capsule communicator in the Canaries has just reported to Kraft that he's still been unable to receive any of the various beacons from the Agena. This is Gemini Control at 20 minutes after the hour. And you see on our orbital map uh, the point at which uh, the uh, Gemini uh, has reached, if indeed uh, uh, it uh, is still in orbit. Uh, we have no confirmation that it is, as a matter of fact, in orbit. There's Jack King at, at Houston, the present at, uh, time Kennedy. in the spacecraft, as the astronauts await word also on the status of the Agena. They have been talking off and on with astronaut Alan Bean, who is the spacecraft communicator in the blockhouse. The spacecraft communicator in the blockhouse has the call sign Stoney. Uh, Alan Bean has been talking with the astronauts as they prepare to go through their final switch list. This is a series of checks on all the panels inside the Gemini 6 spacecraft to ensure that all the switches are in the proper position at liftoff. It's a double check as we reach the later phases of the uh, Gemini count. As we await further word on the Agena, the count is continuing on the Gemini launch vehicle and spacecraft at Launch Complex 19. We're now coming up on T minus 73 minutes. Mark, T minus 73 minutes and counting. This is Gemini 6 launch control at the Cape. The uh, Atlas uh, booster has put 10 Agenas uh, into orbit successfully, uh, 10 operating Agenas that have worked well. Uh, there have been no failures in the uh, Atlas Agena program uh, yet uh, until perhaps, and it may be, uh, that this is the unfortunate day. Uh, that uh, the loss of telemetry, in other words, reports from the uh, uh, Agena itself stopped abruptly at the very moment when the rockets were supposed to be fired that would uh, uh, put the Agena on up a few more miles into its 185 mile high circular orbit. Uh, although there were reports, as you have heard, of some faint radio signals from the Agena, these have not been uh, confirmed and apparently the Canary Islands, which was the first station that could really begin to track and to listen to the Agena, reported it had no success. If the Agena is in orbit, uh, it uh, is now uh, just uh, over the uh, uh, African continent, about uh, midway uh, on its first orbit. The count at Houston, meanwhile, continues, of course, until they make a decision that uh, indeed they cannot raise the Agena and have to scrub this mission today. The count is now T minus 71 and a half minutes, one hour, 11 and a half minutes before the Gemini with astronauts Shira and Stafford is scheduled to uh, take off to chase that Agena for what had been hoped would be America's and the world's first rendezvous and docking mission in space. The failure of the Agena, if that's what uh, it turns out to be, of course, uh, will be a mo great disappointment to America's space program and will, in effect, uh, uh, set us back a couple of months until the Agena can be launched again. Uh, it, however, does not in any way test our ability at rendezvous and docking, of course. That does not, will not even get a chance to be tested. Uh, this uh, it could almost be called, if there are such things, a routine failure in uh, a, a launch problem. 